Hey everybody, Mac here. In part one of this series, I tried Might and Main to achieve better than 60 FPS performance in DCS World A10C. While I was able to reach just at that level, the fact that changing resolution even to what I consider to be quite low levels was troubling. Going through the paces from 2560 by 1600 top settings to 1680 by 1050 with no anti-aliasing enabled, I was still unable to achieve what I wanted. This was in all a frustrating and time-consuming process that was nonetheless educational. I did some research on the subject and came to the conclusion that the best solution would be to purchase a relatively recent NVIDIA graphics card. The reason for this is that AMD has done no DirectX 9 driver optimization or support for some years. As DCS World is still a DirectX 9 title, AMD's products will always be hamstrung while running DCS World. There's been some recent discussion of a new Edge engine for the ridiculously vaporware Nevada Terrain set and possible DirectX 11 support in DCS World, but I found that waiting for some miracle to resolve AMD's historical shortfalls in the driver arena is just folly. But recently on the Eagle Dynamic forums, there's been some chatter about Catalyst Drivers version 14.4. With zero anticipation or excitement, Let's see what this does for DCS World performance as opposed to the 14.2 drivers I used last night. Pull up, pull up. It's apparent just from visual confirmation that no grievous injury was done by updating to 14.4 drivers. Action at 2560 by 1600 no MSAA is as smooth as it was last night, with the result that gun and rocket runs are a pleasure to execute. A glance up at DX3 ticking away the FPS seemed to bear out that performance was similar to 14.2 drivers, if not a tad better. Fraps seems to want to tell me that everything is well. Average FPS is decently above 60, minimum FPS is better than any other run yet recorded in this series, and the spikes previously observed during ground target engagement and activation of the air ground mode on the right MFD is muted. But as I look at the frame times after activating air ground mode, I'm troubled. Though average FPS is well above 60, the frame times graphed here would support an average FPS of around 53 to 54, certainly lower than 60. What's going on here? Before moving on, I want to draw your attention to frame 6733 rendered at 125 milliseconds, right when I was at the bottom of an attack run with guns and rockets. I'm going to take a snapshot of frame times from three points in this run to show a problem. Closer investigation reveals that from waypoint 1 to waypoint 3, things appear well but there's something going on under the surface. Frame times, though low enough to support 60 frames per second, are showing variance. It's not much, just the difference between 12.75 milliseconds and 15 milliseconds, but it suggests that there's some traffic jam happening that may cause problems later. After frame 6733, which took 125 milliseconds to render, and activation of air ground mode, frame time variance became more pronounced. Perhaps the additional burden of the right MFD displaying a 512 by 512 image is the cause of this. Again, the differences are small on an absolute sense. Half the frames are rendered at about 11 milliseconds, and half are rendered at 18 milliseconds. But this is different than the initial frame time variance that we saw at the beginning of the benchmark because now every other frame is being rendered at less than 60 frames per second, less than the refresh rate of my monitor, and therefore it exhibits itself as micro stutter. This problem doesn't correct itself. In fact, it gets worse. By the end of the run, after dropping a bomb on the bridge at waypoint 4, frame time variance has increased to the point where every other frame is being rendered at about 50 frames per second. You can see what this means in this footage, where I'm looking out the side of the aircraft, zoomed in, looking for ground targets. During this footage, I'm flying at about 12,000 feet, zoomed all the way in to simulate the use of optical aids. The effect of micro stutter on image quality is subtle, but it makes a sometimes difficult task even more so. This is not a new problem. Micro stutter was present under Catalyst 14.2, but not at all times, or under all resolutions. Though my system was not able to reach anywhere near 60 frames per second at 2560 by 1600 ultra settings, frame time variance was still less than 10% from one frame to the next. This suggests that the phenomena might not have anything at all to do with total load placed upon the GPUs, but something else, perhaps total data throughput. Though the GPUs are working mightily to try to render Georgia at 16xq MSAA, the total number of frames rendered are not so many, 
therefore perhaps not as heavy a burden on the available data bus. Or maybe it's a CPU limitation, or the CPU is not being overtaxed. To use a water analogy, lots of water, but low pressure. While my system was unable to reach 60 FPS at 2560 by 1600 2x MSAA, frame time variance was not a problem, with only very small difference from frame to frame. Ironically, as resolution decreases and my system crosses the threshold of average FPS above 60, frame time variance appears. Most frustratingly, though average FPS is above 60, you can easily see here that every other frame is rendered at less than 60 frames per second, and every other frame is rendered at greater than 60 FPS. Performance is not sufficient enough to enable VSync, which might correct this problem, nor is it sufficient to push this problem below the surface. The problem does not disappear at 1680 by 1050 either, though the overall experience was pretty smooth. At this point, the temptation to surrender is growing, but I have an ace in the hole. Maybe. What I haven't mentioned is that up to this point I've been running a modification of the graphics.lua file to allow for very high view distance. That is to say, farther than the view distance allowed by the default high visibility setting and options. I got this from an older thread in the Eagle Dynamics forums, which was originally posted by Kuki. Because the file structures have changed since then, I was unable to follow his instructions to create a very high option in the visibility dropdown, but I was able to modify the high settings to reflect this longer view distance. By changing these back, I might recover the performance I need to reach my goals. Here's what this change resulted in. Starting out with a quite high 73 frames per second, performance understandably spikes downward when going into the mud with guns and rockets at waypoint 3, then recovers as I point skyward and orient toward waypoint 4, the bridge. When I activate air-to-ground mode on the right MFD, performance levels out as I gain altitude and drop a GBU-38. This time, once the bomb strikes, I set the right MFD to standby, and immediately performance increases returning to approximately 68 frames per second. This suggests something very interesting. Here's what I discovered upon looking more closely at frame times at key points during this benchmark run. While moving from waypoint 1 to waypoint 3, frame times were consistent and low. At all times, performance was above 60 frames per second. After attacking the insurgent convoy at waypoint 3 and orienting toward waypoint 4, I switched on air-to-ground mode and micro-stuttering began. It's almost as if the frame times correspond to the two separate images being displayed, the faster frames corresponding to the smaller 512 by 512 pixel MFD, and the slower frames corresponding to the cockpit and outside environment. In fact, this may be exactly the case. Once I drop a GBU-38 on the bridge at waypoint 4, I set the right MFD to standby, and though frame times remain variable, Performance increases to the point where all frames are rendered faster than 16.6 milliseconds. Microstutter remains once induced, but is not observable on a 60 Hz monitor since all 60 frames are being served up in time. I tested out my theory that Microstutter was linked to MFD imagery, and that it is also persistent by means of using Mavericks and the FLIR pod. I loaded up a training mission, selected a loadout of Mavericks, and then headed toward a target array. I established Angels 10, ingress toward the array, began benchmarking at 10 nautical miles, activated the Maverick pod at 7 nautical miles, and fired a Maverick at 5 nautical miles. Once the target was struck, I waited 20 seconds, set the right MFD to standby, and then continued over the target array at Angels 10. The results were exactly as expected. 60 frames per second prior to activating the FLIR pod on the right MFD, then a period of decreased performance as the FLIR pod was active, then a slight bump as the target was struck and destroyed, then a recovery of performance following deactivation of the FLIR pod imagery. All of this is not surprising, nor at this point are my findings that there is little to no frame time variance prior to activating the FLIR, a period of highly patterned frame time variance and micro stutter while the FLIR pod is actively displaying imagery on the right MFD, and then a continuance of frame time variance, but a recovery of performance after setting the right MFD to standby. Micro stutter with my system is linked to display of imagery on the MFD. Avoiding it is beyond my ability. The question now becomes one of mitigation and trying to improve performance to the point where MFD induced micro stutter happens below the 16.6 millisecond threshold and is therefore not observable. Thanks for watching. Part 3 coming soon.